And what I'd like to ask you uh, at the beginning was what your experiences are, what uh, media you originate from. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with open democracy. So, Alex, I want you to tell us a, a few words about open democracy and your experience with working with the media, electronic media, paper, traditional media, what the media are like today, what they expect from you as editors and authors. My name is Alex Akalis. I come from a, I'm an editor at opendemocracy.net. We are a platform for debate and analysis based in London. At the moment, our main concerns are issues which the mainstream media tends to avoid. Uh, from a UK perspective, from a European perspective, that involves TTIP, which is one of our main kind of issues. Uh, the other one is the upcoming Brexit debate. We're trying to create a space for people to debate this rationally. Because Because the debate that is being framed in the mainstream media now around the current referendum is based around essentially do we love business more than we hate immigrants or do we hate immigrants more than we love business. The DM25 movement by Yanis Varoufakis to try and democratize Europe. We're also interested in the rise of populism both to the left and the right and getting these people to come and give their opinions and we're also interested um, in essentially providing a platform for people to come and debate issues in a non-partisan way. We don't have an editorial line um, because all lines should be contested. Uh, so that is our space. And at the moment, we have filled that kind of niche. I think it's perhaps even more interesting not to be tied with anyone, half Polish and half British. So when I had a lot of free time in a college in, in a university in England, I came here to Poland and I started writing first for blogger, me, bloggers and uh, media supported by foundation about the East Euro Eastern Europe. And when I was here and I wrote more and more, I, uh, I got in more uh, into the mainstream media. And this is what it looks like. I mainly work for The Economist in London for political Europe in Brussels, and also Monocle, a more of a lifestyle magazine that is published in London. These are the three main um, editors that I work with, but I also write for other people as well. So this is not very stable or predictable as a job, but on the other hand, it's very interesting, and you don't do the same thing twice. It seems to me that it is changing very much indeed, uh, sure. Uh, the way of employing journalists uh, does not have to uh, determine whether or not they can say something valuable or not. Um, but to a larger degree, they are dependent on uh, the people who will then decide whether or not they'll make some money. So the media today in Poland are, in fact, uh, a very precarious uh, occupation. Uh, in fact, most of the radical majority of the people who work for the media, I'd say about 80% or even more of the people work uh, on, um, on a freelance basis, a fragmented, fragmented basis, uh, but it's quite common for large mainstream media to uh, take on uh, or perhaps to take advantage of uh, people who are very young, mostly students, to do the job and squeezing the lemon. Uh, so they squeeze as, as long as it is uh, possible and it gives juice, but then they take a new one. And that is the, the type of um, uncertainty that uh, rarely really translates into a direct order, write about this, write, don't write about that, like don't write about TTIP because it's not interesting. But there is this level of in uncertainty that makes journalists who work for such media being intelligent, obviously, as they are, that makes them look at what the boss wants and what gets um, the hits online. As a matter of fact, I write for the mainstream uh, media. So for us, the question is how do you actually survive in the market uh, full of, you know, volatility and precariousness. So it's really uh, also related to uh, uh, clickability. We describe ourselves on our website as a commons. Our 
idea is to challenge the general passivity of the reader, the idea that the reader you know, consumes what is written for them, the idea that journalism is performed, essentially, by sort of bourgeois liberal people, and then the reader consumes them, and it's a passivity. We want an active readership. We want people to come to our site and choose what to read. We don't want to tell them what to read. If we only write in English, we'll probably only reach an audience of people who, Europeans who are, you know, have a certain kind of type to them. They're sort of educated, they're erasmus -y. you know. They perhaps are sort of gearing themselves up for a job in the NGOs and stuff like that. I mean, if we really want to reach, you know, other people, I mean, that's an issue. I mean, English is the global language. It's not true that the formerly reliable media did not create the undescript space, uh, that they didn't exclude many topics from their mainstream activity. But today, the chaos is incredibly more widespread, and the question remains whether there is a way out of it. And I think that the, the hunger for leadership is still there. If someone raises the flag and says, I've got something to say and I will lead you, then people will, readers will follow. <laughs> but um, this may be very dangerous sometimes. Why dangerous? Because they are following and going towards a dangerous way and they, they don't check that. They trust, but they don't check it anymore. And the, 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 the whole right-wing anti-immigrant uh, revolution in Europe is, is that exactly that. Um, uh, they, they say that they know what the truth is, and they know who's guilty of the fact that flats in Poland are too expensive or not accessible, why they, uh, their contracts are, um, are are trash, and, 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 and that's the conviction that they have. Briefly, I think it's utopic, it's impossible to uh, uh, achieve, but the utopia of uh, neutral media think seems very false to me, because uh, it, there's a problem that all of a sudden journalists are completely withdrawn from the world of human culture, intellectual culture, and they can then be, become independent observers. Philosophers are have confronted this paradox as whether or not we can be independent observers that are not uh, biased by their own biography, their own gender, their own um, political views, and they have done away with it. And whereas journalists uh, still seem to be perceived from that mythical perspective. Now the question remains whether when you are a medium that has its ideological specified declared character, can I be an honest medium? And I think that's the fundamental question. Is it honest to say from what political perspective, more or less, I am speaking? I think that is the honest thing to do, rather than saying I am being objective. Just a point on neutrality. In the UK, we have the BBC. The BBC is a state broadcaster, and by law and by remit, it's meant to be neutral. But, you know, what, what exactly... What, what is neutrality? Neutrality is, you know, having a scientist debate with a climate change skeptic. That is, you know, essentially one idea of neutrality. It creates a false uh, level of equivalence between two arguments, and you know, this gives a, a and it doesn't create a debate, nor does it actually. Um, it's not neutral because it's not neutral to have someone who is a climate change skeptic, which is a position supported by like three percent of scientists, versus someone who is a an actual scientist. And this strive towards neutrality is, I think, giving people a false perception at, of, firstly, of binarity and of other things like that. Another case, for example, uh, when Jeremy Corbyn was elected last year, the BBC insisted for a long time in referring to him as the far left leader of the Labour Party. But it never referred to David Cameron as the far right leader of the Conservative Party. But, you know, I mean, there's no reason why Jeremy Corbyn can be far left and David Cameron can't be far right. You know, everything you write and every, every word you choose, everything you choose, every, every um, news story you choose to publish, every news story you choose to withhold is a political act. And the idea of striving towards neutrality, um, you know, it, it creates, it, 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 it's false. I mean, neutrality doesn't exist and we should never strive towards it because it will ruin political debates and it will create people in a false sense of security about the news they um, the news they receive. It only, pub, only public media 
can really set a standard of reliability and credibility of the journalists. Other media may perhaps try and catch up with them, um, better or worse, but the public media should be a right that, that citizens could, should enjoy. We have a right, apart from many other, n like not to be uh, arrested without any grounds, not to uh, have tabs on your phones, not to be robbed at work. You have also, as a citizen, a right to receive a reliable report from what's happening in the world that would help you to make political choices. But the authorities are not interested in that. They are not interested for us to have, in us having full knowledge and in us being able to make political choices. And that's the essence of the problem. If revolution will not be televised, uh, bringing it back to the title, where is, where is the revolution going to be shown? How do we actually know there is a revolution? I would like to add that uh, revolution will not be televised by tweeted, uh, but, it, but the web is uh, about quantity and who is louder, which is not always true, which is not always the, 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 the valuable voice. And probably the right wing will be more, uh, will be louder in Poland, I, I don't know. The revolution today is not people you know, attacking the Winter Palace. The revolution today is at a personal level. It's, you know, people identifying as transgender. We now live in a, in a world where there's more than uh, two genders. It's, you know, people, it's gay, it's gay marriage in Ireland. It's, you know, it's people themselves uh, transforming their own selves. And for that way, they're transforming society. It's not any kind of big spectacle. In that sense, uh, it won't be televised because there won't be anything really to televise. It's not cinematic. Um, but it's also the fact that I think these people are actually doing the media for themselves. They are going onto social media, they are doing it. Uh, many of the, you know, the, the, the campaign to elect Jeremy Corbyn in the UK was done predominantly on social media. Uh, Podemos started out of its own kind of uh, TV show, La Tuerca. It's people who are moving away from this idea of the passive consumer model and going towards an active consumer model. And the democratization of, of media through social media is one thing helping that. In that sense, it's a very positive thing, and I can only be optimistic about it.